Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at IAS 37, which cover provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. This topic is covered in international accounting as well as the CPA exam and the ACCA exam as well. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, put them in the playlist share them with the world. If they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. So please share the wealth. This is my Instagram account. Please follow me on Instagram. This is my Facebook account. And this is my website. On my website, if you'd like to um, support the channel, you could always donate. That's greatly appreciated. On my website also, I have a limited time offer now from Becker, which will give you a thousand dollar off of the Becker bundle, the four parts CPA exam. Becker is the gold standard in CPA preparation for the CPA exam. I strongly suggest you go for it. It's The link is on my website if you're going to go for your CPA exam. Although you may not be studying now, you, you can have this as long as you need to. So if you're a college student, you can supplement your studies with Becker. Before we talk about AIS 37, we need to talk a little bit more about liabilities because AIS 37, provision and contingent liabilities, are form of liabilities. So if we don't understand what liabilities are, we won't be able to understand what the provisions and the contingent liabilities are. So we're going to go back to IAS 1 and the presentation of financial statement. And the first thing we need to know, liabilities, they could be current or non-current. So first we need to know what is a current liability, what's a non-current liabilities. Well, what is a current liability? Simply put, a current liability is a liability that it's expected to be settled in the normal operating cycle. What does that mean? It means within our operating cycle, and we're going to assume for the sake of illustration, our operating cycle is 12 months or one year. Okay? So as long as you're going to settle it, settle it means either pay it off, refinance it, um, defer it, you're going to settle this liability within 12 months, okay? And you're holding primarily for trading purposes. It means this liability for operating operating your business. Expect to be settled within 12 months. Again, what really matters is your normal operating cycle. We assume it's 12 months. Or you cannot defer it more than 12 or does not have the right to defer it. You don't have the right to defer it more than 12 months. Again, when we say 12 months, really, we mean the operating cycle, but we always assume that the operating cycle is 12 months. Now, compared to US GAAP, they're very similar in terms of how we do define liabilities, but they differ in few things. One is refinancing short-term debt. Okay, refinancing short term that may be classified as long term is the refinancing is completed before the balance sheet date. This is IFRS. What does that mean? If you have a short term debt, if you have a short term loan, but it's going to be refinanced, you're going to replace this loan with the long term loan. For that short term loan to be considered long term, you have to refinance it before the balance sheet date. This is IFRS. Under US GAAP, they're a little bit more flexible. Under US GAAP, you don't have to complete it by the balance sheet date. Under US GAAP, although this is not a US GAAP course, but just want to let you know it differ. For example, if this December 31st is the balance sheet date, if your year end is here, and let's assume you're going to prepare your financial statement on March 1st. As long as you can take care of it, show that you have the ability or you actually refinance it or have the ability, then you can cl classify this loan under US GAAP. Under IFRS, guess what? We have to refinance here in this period before the year end. So that's the difference. So here GAAP, they have a little bit more flexibility. As long as you can do it before you issue the financial statements, we can live with that. Amount payable on demand due to violation of debt covenant must be classified as current unless a waiver of at least 12 months is obtained from the lender by the balance sheet date. Um, what does that mean? Under, uh, under IFRS, if there's a violation of the debt, what is a violation of the debt? You took out a loan, the bank or the lender might impose um, conditions on you. Condi conditions such as your retained earning has to be maintained at a certain level. You cannot pay out dividend. Uh, you have to con contain a certain amount of cash. Let's assume you took out a loan on uh, you know, November 1st and you borrowed a million dollars. Okay. Here comes December 31st is the year end. By December 31st, and this loan was for three years. 
So this is a long-term loan. By December 31st, so it didn't take you very long, two months, you violated your debt covenant. You did something in your financial statements. Maybe you paid out too much dividend. And as a result, the bank said, guess what? Now this loan, I, want, I, need, I need you to pay the whole loan back because you violated the debt covenant. Okay? Now, under IFRS, unless you can get a waiver before December 31st, which is year end, you're assuming this is year end, you have to get the waiver here, you have to get the waiver here, and the waiver has to tell you you have more than 12 months to take care of it. In other words, fix your retained earning, whatever you violated. Okay? Now, under US GAAP, they're a little bit more flexible here. Let's assume you're going to issue your financial statement March 1st. You still have this time to get that waiver, to get that waiver. So they give you more time, okay? So it may be, it might be, um, you, you, you have to obtain that waiver by the issuance of the annual report, okay? We're assuming it's here and December 31st. So they give you a little bit more time. Bank overdraft are netted against cash if the overdraft from an integral part of the entity's cash management. Otherwise, the bank overdraft is defined as a current liability. Well, under US GAAP, bank overdraft are always current liabilities. So this is basically kind of a comparison between the two. But let's talk about what we need to talk about. AIS 37, which is provision, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. In this session, I will not cover contingent asset. I'm going to break this AIS 37 into two parts. I will cover that in the next session. But what does it do? What does it, What's the purpose of the IAS 37? It provides guidance for reporting liabilities and assets of uncertain timing, amount, or existence. What does that mean? It means we have a liability, but guess what? There's something about the liability we are missing. What is that something that's missing? When are we gonna pay it, the timing? The amount, how much are we gonna pay? Or whether there's a liability or not, okay? And those are basically, those are the provisions and the contingencies which we'll talk we'll, which we will talk about shortly also it contains specific rules related to what's called an ERIS contract which i will talk about this in the next session and restructuring cost i will talk about this in the next session issues that, that, that deals with environmental cost which is environmental liabilities and disclosure how much do we need to disclosure so in this session i will focus only on provisions and contingent liabilities kind of they're the same in the same boat because they talk about liabilities that are uncertain Asserting in terms of time, amount, or even existence. Okay, so IS 37 talks about provision, and basically those are liabilities, as, a, as we said, of an uncertain um, timing, amount, or existence. Now, but the question is, do we know what is a liability? Do, do we know the the definition of a liability? Basically, a liability is so you have an obligation. This is what a liability is. You have an obligation a present obligation to be more specific you have a present obligation that happens because of a past event I'll give you an example you borrowed money from the bank you debited cash credited notes payable for 100,000 that's something happened in the past as a result now you have a hundred thousand dollar in notes payable and in the future you have to pay the liability you have to sacrifice your asset, you have to sacrifice, usually you pay it in cash. You have to sacrifice some economic benefit. Usually you pay your liabilities with cash. It doesn't have to, sometimes you have to perform your service. I'm just make sure you I'm just making sure you understand what a liability is. So this is what a liability is. Now a, a provision, when would the provision should be recognized? So it's a little bit different than the liability. It's a liability, but it's that it has it has a little bit more um, characteristic to it. The entity has a present obligation, which again, we talked about the present obligation. It, it could be legal, like you sign a loan, or a constructive. It could be constructive means you accepted some responsibilities that made that, that expect that made you have made the other party have a valid expectation for you to deliver. So this is what constructive. So a company accepts certain responsibilities, thus creating valid expectation. For example, if you honor a warranty, now you have a constructive liability because you have to you have to uh, deliver. You have to deliver in case something happened. You have to make the product um, whole for that customer in case it breaks down. You have to. You might have to replace it. Okay. Also, it is probable. Now, probable means more likely than not. And how do we define this? And we're talking about this is an international accounting, so we're talking about IFRS. More likely than not is defined basically in the literature as fifty percent plus. So if there's more likely than not, there's more than 50% chance that you're going to have to pay something in the future, then 
that liability is will have to be uh, will have to be recognized recognized means recorded so first you have to have an obligation okay either constructive or legal the probability of you paying it has to be just more than 50 percent now us gap is a little bit different they want basically higher probability and the third component is we have to have a reliable estimate. You have to know how much you are going to be paying or you can estimate how much you're going to be paying. Now, you might be saying, what happened if the probability is that if it's probable less than one, less than 50 percent, less than 50 percent means it's uh, as far as FIRS, it's not likely than not. You're not going to pay. OK, we're going to talk about this. Well, but those are the three conditions. One, two, three to have a provision, to, to record a provision. And what does it mean to record a provision? Generally speaking, to debit either an expense or a loss most of the time and credit a liability. So you have a provision, you have a provision, you have a liability and basically for to pay something, $10,000, you debit expense or a loss and you credit a liability. See, I'm going to be responsible for that. Why? Because there's a more than 50% chance I'm responsible for this and I can estimate this $10,000. Now, how do you know if you have a provision? Well, you ask yourself, can you avoid this obligation? If you cannot avoid the obligation, then you have an obligation. Okay? Now, th those are provisions. What are contingent liabilities? Because I told you they're kind of the same thing. Okay? They're possible obligation that arises from a past event whose existence will be confirmed by the occurrence or a non-occurrence of a future event. So basically, simply put, something happened in the past and we're, we're waiting for the future to see if that if the liability will will occur or not the best the the a classic example is a lawsuit someone someone sues you that's a contingent liability why because you might lose depending on the outcome by the judge and the jury okay or contingent liability exists when you have a present obligation that is not recognized you cannot recognize it why can't you not recognize it? Because it's not probable. How do we define probable? Less than 50% that an outflow of resources will require to be settled or you cannot measure the amount that you have to pay. So you do have, you do, you do have a liability. It exists. But here's the problem. There's less than 50% chance or there's more than 50% chance, but you don't know the dollar amount. Why don't you Why don't you know the dollar amount? Because the case is so unique and it all depends on the jury. The jury could award the plaintiff, uh, could award the plaintiff a dollar or they could award them a million dollars. You really cannot make any estimate. Under those circumstances, you have contingent liabilities. So basically provisions, let me just show you this picture. Although I use this when I, I teach US GAAP, but this is basically, I can use this for um, IFRS as well. So what's going to happen is you have to, you have to, uh, you have to guess, or the company will have to estimate or study their probability of losing if they are being sued. The probability of losing. If usually, let's start with remote. Remote means there's no chance or a very low chance. Okay. Basically, we can ignore the situation. Okay. Now, if it's under, um, let me show you U.S. gap first. Let me just explain U.S. gap. Under US GAAP, if there's remote chance you're going to lose, you ignore the situation. If it's reasonably possible. Now, US GAAP does not give you a percentage for reasonably possible, but they say reasonably possible. Reasonably possible means it may or may not happen. We're not really sure. What you need to do, you need to do a footnote. Footnote means you need to disclose it. Disclosing means what? Means you tell the in the financial statement, you tell us you're being sued by such and such party, and here are the merits of the case. It's in 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 a federal state, whatever court it is in. Um, it's gonna take us three years to resolve this issue, and just be aware of it. Okay, we disclose it. Now, if it's probable, now U.S. GAAP says probable has to be like seventy to ninety-eight percent. Like really, there's a high chance you are going to lose. OK, if you have a, if there's a high chance you are going to lose, that's not enough. You accrue only if you know the dollar amount. So there's a it's a probable and you know the dollar amount If probable plus the dollar amount. Then you accrue. Accrue means you would recognize. So this is U.S. gap. OK, now I'm going to use, use a different color. If you don't know the dollar amount, you just disclose. Now I'm going to use a different color to illustrate IFRS. IFRS simply put. Simply put, if it's less than 50%, let's assume the 50% level here. If it's less than 50%, okay, you can disclose. 
basically you could put in the notes once it's more than 50 percent and and you can estimate then you would recognize so notice the threshold is lower 50 percent plus and you know the dollar amount you will you would record okay so it's anything less it's a contingent liability and you will disclose in the notes now the question becomes how do you measure how do you measure the dollar amount what's the estimate because you're estimating well the best estimate okay it's how much it's going to cost you to settle it on the balance sheet date that's the best estimate now how do you of course <laughs> that's the best estimate now how do you do it well one way to do it is to do a probability uh, weighted expected value what does that mean let's assume there's a you know 10 percent chance you would lose a hundred thousand there's 20 percent chance you would lose three hundred thousand dollars so on and so forth so you'll add up all your percentage 100 percent and you will take 10 percent times 100,000 that's 10,000 20 percent times 300,000 if my math is right is that's 60,000 and you add up all the probabilities and that's the expected okay so this is the best value is the probability weighted expected value within a range of estimate this is an estimate or the midpoint of all estimates are equally are, are equally likely you know if you have two numbers it's either 50,000 or 100,000 well let's split the difference 75,000 now also the provision must be discounted if you expect to be paying this three years from now you will discount it to the present value and provisions must also be reviewed at the end of each accounting period and adjusted to reflect current best estimate so if this is what you estimated now and next year there's more evidence to the case and now they're gonna up the uh, up the settlement then guess what you're gonna have to change that as well the best way to do this is just to look at an example to see how this all worked. A former employee of this company filed a lawsuit against the company in year one for age discrimination. December 31st, the external legal counsel provide an opinion that it's 60% probable. There we go, more than 50% that the company will be found li liable, which will result in a total payment between a million and 1.5 million. And there's equally likely 50% chance a million, 50% chance of 1.5 million because it's more likely than not here we go how why more likely than not 60 percent and we know the dollar amount and we know it's 50 percent a million 50 percent 1.5 million guess what now we have a liability of 1.25 1.25 million therefore we debit litigation loss we credit provision for litigation now under us gap i'm telling you under us gap we don't do this why under us gap we don't do this because 60 percent is not high probability under us gap we just disclose that we are being sued by this individual and that's the end now what happened when we actually paid this liability because eventually we're going to have let's assume we paid it and let's assume we settled for one million dollar we settled for one million dollar therefore we have to credit cash a million if we settle for a million we have to debit this uh, uh the provision for loss we have this is a liability we have to debit this provision for law for for loss for litigation loss which is a liability one million two hundred and fifty and now what we have to do we have to reverse litigation loss we have to uh, basically credit reversal of litigation loss which is going to increase our income for year two when we pay it so this is year two when we pay it this is year one it's going to increase our income by two hundred and fifty thousand if you have any questions about this topic please email me if you happen to visit my website please consider donating if you're studying for your cpa exam or your certification study hard it's worth it in the next session i will take a look at those topics which is part of ias 37 good luck